Way to go, Ken Trippett. Way to go. Spoiling Alejandro Bedoya's home debut. Brian Wright is here. I'm Adrian Fed Q. Three to one loss to Toronto FC. And quite frankly, it could have been a lot worse than that. Yeah, it uh, definitely could have been worse. I think uh, a lot of the union fans, uh, myself included, were kind of looking forward to the Toronto game as a benchmark to see how we stack up against the big boys in the East. Unfortunately, uh, the stars of Toronto, Joe Spassi, Javinko, and Josie Altador, sort of had their way with our young central defense. And, uh, yeah, not, not a great, not a great uh, home debut for Bedoya there. Yeah, uh, Javinko scored four goals in his last four games against the Union. He's, he's dominated. Uh, before we get to this central defense, let's talk about Bedoya for just a second because that's what people are going to want to hear about. So what did you think of his home debut? Largely uninspiring but because they really didn't do much. I think he, 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 he's, he was his quiet, effective self when they did manage to move the ball forward. But uh, – they didn't really do a lot with the possession they had, and uh, some of the point blank chances that came across were unfortunately were fired over the crossbar by a long way. Unfortunately, sometimes in football, when uh, it's just not your day, it's just not your day. But but a lot Bedoya was quietly effective at his number eight role where he is going to seem to play. But uh, yeah, there's there's some some glaring issues on this team. Yeah, let's talk about those issues right now. Central defense struggling horribly in this game. Uh, Toronto FC had basically all the chances. Uh, Andre Blake actually made a couple saves to keep it at 3-1 because it could have been 5-1, 6-1 final very, very easily. Uh, So that brings me to this. I mean, the union, they've been trying to hide their – you know, central defense by playing that high pressing style with you know with the midfield and whatever, uh, but clear, clearly that didn't work. Uh, you know, in this one, uh, what are the main problems? It, like, it, it's just they were Toronto FC was just carving them up. Yeah, you know, it, like I said, we I was looking at this game as a bit of a benchmark to see where the Union were. It's it's fairly obvious now that they they are not on the same level as a Toronto FC or even perhaps the New York City FC, even though they did manage to beat New York City FC earlier in the season. Early in the year, the defense was a, a, a strong point because people were raving about how we have all young defenders, with the exception of maybe Fabinho on the left side. You've got Keegan Rosenberry on the right side. He's a rookie. You've got Richie Marquez, a second-year guy in central defense. You've got – and then the, the young rookie pairing of Ken Trivet and Josh Yara. Early on in the season, when things were going well, they were posting clean sheets – that was the talk of the of the of the area. You know, the Union have this really young defense. They're they're hungry and young, and they and they do well to stop the ball. And then Vincent Nogueira leaves and leaves a gaping hole in the midfield, which then we force the the defense to kind of play up higher to try and trap and try and you know do the Jurgen Klopp Gengen pressing style, which kind of works. But then you have teams like Toronto that just can cut them open with one pass, as you saw on the first goal to Javinko. So I, they just need to be more disciplined. Yeah. Uh, now this is where I'm going to let you rant about Mr. Trippett. Uh, what the hell was going on with him in this game? You know, Ken Trippett, I have to give Ken Trippett credit because nobody saw him coming in the preseason. It was supposed to be – Yaro and Anderson Coincial, who they signed from Brazil, he's with Bethlehem Steel now. He was going to be their starting center back next to Richie Marquez. But Ken Tribbett did so well in the preseason that the union offered him a contract right from the get-go. So he's been pretty good. He scored a number of goals. He scored, um, scored on Saturday with a nice header off a corner kick. And he's largely been pretty decent at stopping those cutting through passes, but he's not quick. And he sometimes gets his positioning wrong. So, you, I mean, I guess from a coaching perspective, it's definitely a learning experience. I'm sure Jim Curtin had, didn't chew him out after the game, probably just gave him a little private talking to. But it's rare that you see a guy in central defense who scores a goal for his team and then gets yanked at halftime because he's getting absolutely torched by somebody smaller and quicker like Jovanko. Uh, 
Yeah, no, he got absolutely torched. What did you think of Yara's play then in the second half? Well, that, what's interesting is I like Yara. If you don't, if we we don't know, uh, Josh Yarrow played at Georgetown with Keegan Rosenberry, and he was the second overall pick in this year's draft. Keegan Rosenberry was third, also to the Union, right next to him. So you have two teammates that are familiar with each other playing in the same defense, which can only help the cohesion. But in Truman and Yarrow, you basically have two center def- central defenders that have contrasting styles. Yarrow is the quicker guy who relies on his recovery speed to get back and make good tackles. Trivet is a guy who just kind of bruises you out of the way. Unfortunately, the bruising style doesn't quite work when you have the small guy like Jovinko that can just run past you. I thought Yarrow did well, but again, it's a, a contrasting styles because when the Union go and bring in Yarrow, what does Toronto FC do? Then they start feeding Josie. And as you saw on Toronto's third goal, Josie out the door easily muscled both of, the, of our central backs off the ball and scored a nice goal. So it's kind of – it's definitely – I think it's a con, bit of contrasting styles there. But I, – because I like both of their center backs. I think if they have more time, which they've had plenty of time, but the, the, the more they play together, I think the better they'll be. But Jim Curtin's got to settle on one of those two as his starting right center back because he's been alternating back and forth. It seems lately he's been favoring Trivet. I might start leaning the other way. In fact, I know I would. I'd probably prefer Yarrow because he's quicker and better with the ball. But I do think they have a a nice future ahead of them. They're just going to have to work on their positioning a little better. Yeah. All right. I'll pose this question to you: Because there was a layoff uh, from the Copa America tournament. There was like a couple weeks layoff. Is it possible that all these teams went studied the tape and maybe? just maybe figured the union out. I think it's definitely a decent bet. It's a little bit like the NFL where, you know, we saw with <laughs> with Mr. Kelly there that uh, his fun offense worked for a little while and then the defense has figured him out. So I think maybe in the interim there, the, all the MLS coaches have kind of adapted to the way the union want to play because they've said, and Ernie Stewart has said that they want to play a 4-2-3-1 with, you know, interconnecting passes through the midfield up to the forwards and then let the, the other guy, the wingers run off. it. So they, they've kind of stuck to a style, which can be good because it helps them build an identity. But once the, the, the opposition kind of figures out how they want to play, then that's on Jim Curtin to kind of tinker with his formations and figure out which personnel work best depending on the opposition. And he really hasn't done that. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions to possibly – you know, re kind of counter counter back. You know, I like the four two three one. It's fairly common, and it gives your your back four a nice layer of protection in front of them, which we've seen with the young back four they need. So you've got a uh, a Bedoya back there who is an outstanding player, as we've seen. But the other cent- a center midfield defensive midfield spot is yet to be really filled. They've been using Warren Crevail in that spot, and he's not really – he's out of position. He's more of a right back, left back type. So he's out of position, and he's pretty wild with his challenges because he hasn't quite learned how to play that spot. But uh, there is help on the way because Maurice Adu is in full training this week and is getting close to coming back. And he – that's his spot. He, he, he's a, a number eight true central defensive midfielder. So – when he comes back and he plays alongside Bedoya, I think the, the back line is going to have far less trouble. Now, to all the you know kind of, kind of casual Union fans that are going to watch this, uh, what does Adu bring to the table? He is a typical box-to-box midfielder. We had to play him in central defense the last year or so because they just have been really thin back there. But his preferred position is that number eight spot. He can sit in front of the defense – He's really good at getting, uh, reading the game and getting in front of passes, making interceptions, and then getting the ball quickly up to the forwards in transition. But he's also a bit of a marauder. He kind of goes where he wants to go, which can leave the back four a little bit exposed. But he's a very experienced player. He's played in Europe. He's played with Glasgow Rangers. He's played on the U.S. national team. Scored that famous goal in the 2010 World Cup that was actually not a goal, even though it kind of was, if you remember that one. Yeah. Yeah, he scored that goal. So he, his veteran leadership can only help this team. But he's going to give you a very a solid defensive effort, and he'll get forward on set pieces and score you some goals. There you go. All right. 
That was, that was a good little breakdown there. All right, so the Union now, they, they've got two more games this week. So quick turnaround for them to try and figure all this out. I mean, it's crazy because the revolution, it looked like, you know, Bedoya came in here, reinvigorated this whole squad. They win 4 nothing, and, and then you have this performance. So uh, two games coming up. I mean, Columbus isn't very good. But uh, maybe, just maybe, we'll see what this Union team's made of by, by Sunday. Because I got two, two good games coming up. I think so. I think Jim Curtin said it perfectly in the, the post-game press conference from Saturday. He said uh, he doesn't believe his team is as good as the 4-0 win, and he doesn't believe they're as bad as the 3-1 loss. So, you know, they're, they're somewhere in between. When they really click, they're, they're pretty good. But you saw when you have guys like Michael Bradley and – a Giovinco and Altador, they can they can kill you. And unfortunately, I, I think something is lacking on this team with regard to preparing for games because when you're playing a team like TFC, you know they've got Bradley and Giovinco and Altador, and, and those are the guys you have to stop. And they didn't do a good enough job of that because those three guys killed them single-handedly. Giovinco scores the first goal. The second goal to put them up 2-1 was a beautiful set piece by by Michael Bradley, not at home by Drew Moore. And the third goal, they just couldn't handle the strength of Josie Altidore. You've, you've got to do a better job stopping them. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's good little uh, breakdown for the Union today. Uh, three to one loss again by the Union uh, to Toronto FC on Saturday night. So any final thoughts before we head out? No, I think uh, – I think Jim Curtin summed it up pretty well. And again, he said, you know, we aren't as good as the four nothing loss, but we're not as bad as the three or the four nothing win, but we're not as bad as the three one loss. So I think the fact that they have a short turnaround coming on Wednesday is going to speak volumes about their their preparation. Columbus is not a good team, although they did win this weekend, last weekend. They did win, and it's a tough place to play that Matt Frey Stadium over in Columbus. But I think uh, they'll they'll be prepared. You should be able to get at least a draw out of Columbus. Coming home this coming Saturday to face Sporting Kansas City is going to be a challenge because they don't see Sporting Kansas City as often as they used to. So that will be a good, a good uh, test, and I'm sure once we get to that game, the, the, uh, they'll be eager to erase the 3-1 home defeat. So I think hopefully you've got two, if you've got two games coming up this week, I think four points would be a good haul, a draw, and possibly a win at home. Yeah, we'll see because this team struggles on the road. It took how long to uh, crack that that road uh, losing streak? What was it like? Five, five three. Months? They've got three. No, two wins on the road. The same well, game. Now, now, yeah, because they had one on the against the they Rebels. Beat Columbus, yeah, they, they beat Columbus two to one in the second game of the season back in March, and the Revolution victory last week was. Uh, the fir- that the, their second road win of the season. So yeah, five, that was a five month stretch that they went yeah. without winning a road game. So and so hopefully they can do it again. And Columbus will have something to play for because they were in MLS Cup last year and they suck this year. And I'm sure Pride will be on the line there. Yeah. All right, we shall see Wednesday night. Get your DVRs ready, or may- maybe you want to watch it live. Who knows? Uh, Make uh, sure you get the Comcast Network though, because it's on the Comcast Network, not Comcast Sportsnet. There you go. Yeah. Well, I have it, and I will be DVRing it. I, I never watch these games live, but I, I do DVR them. Uh, Brian, I'm sure you'll be watching it live, though. I will. I will. I will do my best to. <laughs> For I Brian, might be, right? I might be at work, but I might eschew work and watch the game instead. There you go. Fuck work. Who, who <laughs> needs to work? Who needs to work. For Brian, right? I'm Adrian. Thank you. We're out. Don't go to work. Watch. Nope. Or DVR it like I do. We're out. See ya.